Good morning, students. Today we are going to learn in detail about the ozone layer. In this module, we are going to learn about the ozone layer, its depletion and its harmful effects, and the causes of destruction of the ozone layer. So let us now learn in detail about this important layer, which is a life-saving gas for the entire earth. Now, as far as the ozone layer is concerned, it is mostly concentrated in the upper part of the stratosphere. And this part of the stratosphere is also known as the ozonosphere. Now, ozone is formed in this stratosphere in a very significant manner. Ozone is a form of oxygen with three atoms instead of two. It is formed when the ultraviolet rays of the sun split the oxygen atom. So here we can see the ultraviolet ray is splitting these two molecules of oxygen. Now this double bond of oxygen is broken and the free radical of oxygen is formed. Now these have two unpaired electrons in each of the oxygen atom. The oxygen free radicals are very reactive and they react with other oxygen molecules and form ozone. That is, these two atoms of oxygen add up with another free radical of oxygen and form O3 or ozone. Now the ozone layer absorbs the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun, which would otherwise severely harm all the living beings on the earth. So here you can see very clearly that when the sun releases its light, the ultraviolet rays are absorbed by the ozone, which is in the stratosphere. The maximum concentration of ozone gas is between 32 to 50 kilometers from the surface of the earth. So here we can see the stratosphere and the ozone is found in this particular part of the stratosphere. Ozone is present both in stratosphere and in the troposphere. However, the stratospheric ozone provides a protective shield around the earth while the tropospheric ozone is a serious Pollutant. Now let us learn about the ozone depletion and its harmful effect. Now this highly uh, useful ozone layer which is in the stratosphere has been threatened by human activities. This layer is very vital for human life. However, a study of ozone layer based on data obtained from satellite shows that there has been a substantial decline of the ozone in around the earth and according to various reports it has been found that the ozone layer has depleted by nearly 50 percent above the north and south poles by about 4% around Australia 
and nearly 3% above the Indian subcontinent. Now, very important question is, why is the ozone depletion maximum at the Antarctic? Because we do not find ozone depletion everywhere. It is only concentrated above the Antarctic. Now, what is the reason behind it? Now, ozone depleting substances are formed throughout the stratosphere ozone layer because, because they are transported great distances by atmospheric motions. The severe depletion of the ozone layer is known as the ozone hole. Now here I would like to explain a very important thing. Ozone hole does not mean that there has been a literal hole above the Antarctic. It is not a hole. It is the thinning of the ozone layer. So scientists have named it as ozone hole, not uh, the, it is actually the thinning of the layer of ozone. Now this occurs here because of special atmospheric and chemical conditions which exist there and nowhere else on the earth. And what is that? It is the very low winter temperatures in the Antarctic stratosphere which causes the stratospheric clouds to form. The temperatures can be less than minus 78 degrees centigrade. And this kind of low temperature leads to special reactions which occur on these clouds combined with relative isolation of the polar stratospheric air, which allow chlorine and bromine reaction to produce ozone hole in the Antarctic during the springtime. The time when the South Pole is tilted towards the sun. Elsewhere, in lower latitudes, we do not find this kind of a low temperature. As a result, this kind of a reaction do not occur in other latitudes. So the entire concentration of ozone layer depletion occurs at the Antarctic which has got this uh, am amount of uh, low temperature that is below minus 78 degree centigrade. The ultraviolet rays can enter the Earth's lower atmosphere and it can lead to disastrous cons consequences. It can lead to skin cancer and render human beings and animals to become blind. It can reduce immunity, cause crop and flora damage and also destroy many aquatic systems. It can also affect materials like wood, rubber, etc. and can turn plastic very brittle. So it has a very disastrous effect if ozone is allowed to come to the earth unfiltered and this can also lead to a high intensity of sunlight. So the ozone helps all these to be protected. So if the ultraviolet rays are reaching the earth without getting filtered, then it will have a very strong and disastrous effect on the earth. Now what exactly are the causes of destruction of the ozone layer? Now scientists have found that continuous release of synthetic chemicals, mainly CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons, have played a major role in the depletion of the ozone layer. 
CFCs are made from synthetic industrial chemical compounds and they contain chlorine, fluorine and carbon atoms. They are widely used as a cooling fluid in refrigeration, um, air conditioning and other cleaning agents. Now these CFC molecules slowly can be released through leaks of these gadgets and can gradually uh, enter the atmosphere and can be carried to high up regions of the stratosphere. Now here, the sunlight, when it falls on these chlorofluorocarbons, it breaks them into fluorine, carbon and chlorine and releases a one molecule of chlorine, which is causing this breakaway of the chlorine. Now this chlorine strikes the ozone, leaving behind chlorine monoxide and oxygen molecule, which results in the loss of ozone. So due to this reaction, there has been a continuous depletion of the ozone. However, there are several other factors also which have been constantly destroying the ozone high up in the stratosphere. This includes the pollution by air traffic, nitrogen oxide emitted by jets and supersonic aircrafts react with the ozone forming nitrogen dioxide and oxygen, thereby destroying the ozone and releasing the oxygen. Radioactive minerals are also responsible for destroying the ozone layer. Radioactive gases like krypton-85 from nuclear plants and from the recycling of the spent fuel go up to the stratosphere where they create water droplets from the moisture which in turn form ice crystals and that enhances the destruction of ozone by the fluorohydrocarbons. Nitrogenous fertilizers can also be a threat to the ozone layer. Nitrogen oxide turns into nitric oxide during chemical reaction with ozone. Nitric oxide acts as a catalyst to speed up the breakdown of ozone in the atmosphere. Depletion of the ozone layer allows the sun's ultraviolet rays to reach the Earth's surface in increasing amount. Besides this, air pollution can also lead to the de destruction of the ozone layer. Chlorofluorocarbons, which is used in um, special uh, pressure cans, refrigeration, uh, excessive emission of sulfur dioxide, uh, then lethal gases, which can be emitted accidentally, as it has happened in the Union Carbide plant uh, in Bhopal, nuclear uh, disasters in Chernobyl, forest fire in Sumatra are all responsible and are a serious threat to the existence of the ozone layer. The Montreal Protocol bans emissions of ozone depleting chemicals. Since the ban on halocarbons, the ozone layer has slowly been found to be recovering. The data clearly shows a trend in decreasing area of the ozone hole. Besides all these protocols and meetings, human beings are also responsible for creating the ozone hole. Until and unless we also become responsible citizens, our atmosphere is likely to be affected due to our irresponsibility.
So with the thought that we become more responsible citizens, I sign off today and that is what we have enough time for. Thank you.